What's up, fam? Welcome back to Whoa, That's Good Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. Per usual, it's about to get so much better because we have great guests on the podcast today. They are two people I've wanted to be on the podcast for a long time because I look up to them from afar. And so I'm so grateful to have them on. We have Jason and Lo Kennedy, and you guys are just so awesome. So thanks for saying yes to being on the podcast. What's up, Sadie? We're so excited. Thanks for having us on. I'm pumped. Y'all are so fun and so cute and new parents. So I was getting a little update on what life is like with a 10-month-old. Give us a little, give us a little um, you know, preview into your life right now. Can you hear him? <laughs> right now he's a little quiet, but he's definitely gonna be making some noises. Uh, my mom's here. We're celebrating her 80th birthday. No so way. we've got a little birthday party going tomorrow. Uh, so she's here helping out. So if you hear a river in the background, that's that. just that's just part of uh, life. But yeah, we were just kind of chatting before we were recording. And um, as you know, it's the greatest thing in the world. It's also very challenging. Yep. Um, I think you learn a lot about yourself, uh, about your marriage, uh, about just kind of you start thinking about the future. Um, and it's been, yeah, I think individually it's been really incredible and and challenging. <laughs> yeah, he's like the happiest little guy, though. I feel like and just such a good baby. He's like slept well from the beginning. Like, wow. He's just very consistent. Wow. I think that's the best part of having a child. I mean, I'm 41, Lowe's younger. Um, I married younger. Uh, and she, she and I were just talking to a lot of friends who have had kids before us and a lot of different, uh, pieces of, uh, advice and wisdom on how to raise your children, how to sleep train. And we took all of it into consideration and the sleep training was huge. So, uh, wow. Highly recommend well, it. Well, I need to like privately call y'all after this and learn <laughs> because whatever I did with Honey did not work. And that is why she was in our bed last night at 5 a.m. And so oh um, we're, you know, we're still working on her sleep training and hopefully it'll come at just the right time before our next baby where it'll kick in. But oh I clearly gosh. need some better tips. Um, he like well, loves his little schedule. That's it's like awesome. a little clock. Yeah, um, we're, we're, we're newbies and we have, you know, uh, we probably shouldn't be giving any advice because we've only been at this for 10 months, but we're happy to let you know what people told us that's worked so far. <laughs> Gosh, I will take it. Well, this podcast is a lot about advice. I always ask my guests, you know, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? But I want to ask you all specifically about marriage advice because y'all have such <laughs> a fun, strong marriage. And obviously, I don't know the ins and the outs of your marriage, but it's so fun to get to look up to such a godly couple from a far um who have just been married and love each other so sweetly and now have a kid and so give us some good uh marriage advice y'all got <laughs> is this the time is this the time in the okay. podcast where we admit that for the past couple months we've kind of been at each other and arguing hey, a little bit you want honesty you'll get it we want all the honesty <laughs> i don't think that's yeah i feel like i was talking to a friend about that even like times where you're adjusting and transitioning like to a new thing I feel like it's not a bad thing like I feel like it always yeah. leads to like more depth and more understanding of each other it's true. um but I would say listen to understand and you're on the same team because I feel good. like so often usually I, I feel like when you're having you know disagreements or at each other it's like personal and it's yep. being taken out on the other person yeah and so I think it's just a time to like look inward and, but then like you're alongside each other while you're doing mm -hmm. that. It's good. So I'm like, that's so normal when you have yes. a baby and everyone's going through different things and yes. um, yeah, learning each other in that time and mm -hmm. learning yourself in that time and just becoming better together through it. Yes. I mean, it's, it's so true. Mm -hmm. It's the first time you've ever gone through this, both of y'all together, you know? And so that giving each other that grace to grow. I mean, I remember I learned so much about grace when we became a parent because it's like, you know, you have to have grace for your child because it's the first time they've ever existed, you know, and then they totally. have to have grace for you because it's the first time you've ever parented and then for each other as husband and wife for each other as you learn to navigate. And there's so many things that come up, but you're so right. That's normal. And I love that y'all said, like, can we be honest? Because I mean, the reality is that's everybody's relationship. You have 
things and and that is what makes your relationship strong. That's what makes you all different than everybody else in the world is that you choose to fight it out with each other. And Christian and I have been learning a lot about that same team this past year because we've always said it like same team, same team. And then this year we've been learning like, okay, what does that look like to actually be on the same team? Like it's not just a saying. It's not just like, oh, we're the Huffs. It's like, no, when you are on a team with someone, you strategize together. You you go through the hard times together. You go through the wins together and the losses. And uh, we went through something hard this year. And we noticed that we both handled it as like such individuals. Like he handled it his way and I handled it my way. And we realized that, you know, when something hard happens to you, you either grow closer or you grow apart. And when you grow closer, it's when you truly have that same team mentality. But when you grow apart, it's when you're like, I got to handle this on my own. And so after that experience, we're like, hold up. We need to like (laughs) sync up. We need to remind ourselves that we are on the same team, what that looks like. So I love that advice. That's so good. Um, One thing about y'all's relationship that particularly I love is how goofy y'all are and silly. (laughs) And uh, for instance, y'all's recent Instagram post about just getting it all out before you walk into uh, where you're going. I'm not kidding. Me and Christian have done something like that where we'll sit in the car and see who can make the weirdest noise. And it's like, we're so weird. And I see that in y'all and I'm like, yes, this is just so great. But I want to ask, how do you like cultivate that goofiness and silliness in a relationship? Is it something you've always done or or was it something one of y'all had to like break the ice for the other one in? Was I goofier? Yeah, Jace is definitely goofier. <laughs> I think he's brought that more out of me. I mean, I've, I've always been kind of weird, like in that way. But I feel like it takes me a second to like break through. <laughs> right. You, you, you always do the same. She has the same dance moves. So when we started doing whatever it is that we were doing, like, let's just be weird. She would do the same dance move over and over and over again. And I said, we got to find a new move. So I think that she's, you know. <laughs> Her, I don't her, remember what it was. Your dance movie. catalog has really, really expanded. I'm, I'm very impressed with it. But I think, you know, look, life is, life's crazy, right? And life's hard. And yeah. um, we've got really fast-paced individual jobs. And um, LA is an interesting place. And, you know, coming home after being on TV every single day. And you work so hard, too. Um, and you, we just kind of... I don't want to be super serious. I want to just have those moments to laugh with each other. My mom always said, uh, I hope you marry someone that appreciates your personality. And Lo absolutely did. Um, and I still say that line all the time as a joke. It's best audience. Yeah. Like if she, <laughs> awesome. she laughs, it, my jokes can be so dumb. And I feel like I am graduating into dad jokes. And some of my friends are like, bro, you used to be way funnier. Um, <laughs> but, so you know, it, I, I'm embracing it. How and do you lo- know it's a dad joke? Uh, oh, yeah. Remind me. It's a parent. It's a parent. <laughs> you see, ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Scruggs Kennedy. Yeah, I have that ready. <laughs> I'm going to bring that home to Christian. And if he listens to this podcast, he'll know exactly where I got it. But I've been telling him, I'm like, your jokes have become so dad-like. And he, he's like, that was not a dad joke. And he literally said someone was wearing camo pants. And he's like, where's your pants? I can't see them. And I was like, oh my gosh, you did not just, you did not just pull that. That is not that funny. That is another level. <laughs> I know. And he was like, that's not a dad joke. And I was like, yes, that is like the definition of a dad joke. Yeah. So, that's so it, funny. It's just inside of you. There's something happens when you have a child um, mm-hmm. where your jokes get slightly cornier and um, it could go one of two ways and mine have, have leaned towards that. But um, yeah, we just, you know, we, we have a lot of serious, you know, great times uh, in our marriage, but we also, I would say 75% of the time we're just joking around. We just want to have friends over the house and just hang out and laugh and, um, and not take life too seriously. I think something happens after 30 years old for me. I'm like, again, 41, any, any year after 30, you realize that like life is really precious Mm -hmm. and you don't really care about what people think about you Mm -hmm. anymore. There are times of course, where that comes into play in your life. But the older you get, I'm just like, I really don't care if people think my jokes are funny anymore. If they don't think that I'm funny anymore. I just, I want, I want to make my, my wife laugh, my friends and family laugh. And, um, that's kind of where we're at with it. We were talking about that last night, actually. We're like, (laughs) who our friend was over. And then his mom, we're like, I want to know in percentages, like how much do you care what someone thinks of you? And I mean, more like your silliness, not like, who you are as a person. I don't know. Cause I was like, I really just don't care. I yeah. feel like at like 31, yes. I was just like, I really don't care. 
<laughs> that's such a freeing place to be though. It's so true. Yeah. I, I feel like I could say the same thing and I feel like you have to get to a place in your life where you just become so confident in who God created you to be, which comes a lot from being confident in who he is. And then it's like, you know what? This is who I am. And the more authentic I am, uh, the happier I am, the, mm-hmm. the better spouse I am, the better friend I am, the better I am as a leader. Like you just realize like who you were created to be is actually the best version of you. And so you really don't care. It's like if somebody doesn't like it, it's like, well, this is who I am. This is the best of me. One thing I'm trying to do better at this year and trying to just consciously think about is buying products that I use on my skin to be natural, okay? Which is very hard to do, but that is why I love Native. And I've talked to you all about Native before, but if you're on the natural kick right now as well and don't want it to just be a kick, but you want it to last, Native is a great place to be. Many of you know Native for their aluminum-free deodorant, which um, has such a simple list of ingredients that you actually understand, which is very nice, like coconut oil, shea butter, and baking soda. When it comes to deodorant, we all want something that's actually going to keep us smelling good, which that box is checked with Native. You have 72 hours of odor protection, naturally derived ingredients, and smooth residue-free application. And actually, while we're talking about this, I literally had them pause the recording so I could put on my deodorant because I keep my Native right here. And I was like, speaking of all this good smelling stuff that checks all the boxes, I am going to do this right now. So I love their scents. The one I'm using that I have in my desk is lavender and roses, but some of their new scents that they have limited releases of are awesome um i actually have been using the it's like the pure cotton one i I think there's one other word that goes with it but it smells so good there are so many that i love the mistletoe one for christmas was great so you gotta always keep up with native because they always have something going on so if you like to stay active like me and you know that you need to smell good because hey you want to actually be liked by people native has got you covered and even if you're not super active native will keep you smelling your best all day and night now they have um other kind of scents like i mentioned they even have right now for the valentine's day season they have uh scents like gummy bears sour berry belt and uh, one that i just got actually is the strawberry and vanilla taffy they smell so good and they're just really fun so it's kind of fun to change your deodorant up with the season it's something that you don't really think about but when you do it's like oh it's so fun so now is the time to make the switch from antiperspirant to native so when you visit their site you can check out all their fresh scents and maybe even try out one of their body washes while you're at it i like the coconut vanilla body wash myself fill and smell fresh this year with native get 20 percent off your first order by going to nativedeo.com slash woe or use the promo code woe at checkout that's nativedeo.com slash woe or use the promo code woe at checkout for a 20 percent off your first order and i love that you said your your mom always said that to you that she wanted you to marry someone who appreciated your personality because my mom would say the same things. And um, I remember that was so huge for me. And I didn't have that a lot in the other guys that I had dated. But I remember when I met Christian on our first date, and I don't even know how it led to this, but somehow we were having like a dance off in a parking lot. And (laughs) I just remember being like, this is so fun. Like I'm, I'm being so myself. He's being so himself. And this is what it's supposed to feel like to authentically be you in a relationship and for that to be appreciated. And Christian's not as crazy a, as me. Like he's not as silly. Or, he's actually become a lot more kind of like y'all. Christian would maybe do <laughs> yes. the same dance move. He's expanded his as well. Um, but he always appreciated that in me. He didn't try to like make that, you know, be dumbed down or be like, that's so embarrassing. Why are you doing this in public? He would either join or laugh. And that is such a gift in a relationship yeah. to not feel like you have to be less than who you are, but to be all that you are and for them to bring that out of you. So I love that. So tell me how y'all met. Bring us back to the beginning. This like is, <laughs> that's a loaded question. It's one of my favorite questions and stories to tell. Um, love it. Do you want me to tackle it? Yes. It all started. <laughs> I well, love it. Story form. <laughs> so essentially, um, I was sitting at my cubicle. I, I was uh, I just finished 16 years at E! News hosting the show. And um, I was sitting at my desk. It was a cubicle. And uh, I was on the computer and I saw this story and it said, model and blogger hit by plane propeller like in critical condition, just crazy story on TMZ or something. 
And I said, wow, that's really wild. Um, and I just started following the story. Um, after that, we were covering it on our show, um, wondering, you know, is she okay? And there wasn't a lot coming out from that story. It just kind of went away, but still people were talking about it here and there. And um, I don't know, after a couple of months, I started pursuing like, how is Lauren doing? Um, I'd love to, to do an interview and never got a response from anybody. You weren't doing any interviews at the time. You were in actual recovery. Um, and that was the last thing on your mind. And then um, speeding it up another couple of months, um, my co-host at the time, Juliana Rancic, um, I may have said something here and there. I'd be really cool to meet uh, Lo. Um, but she goes, hey, just so you know, I'm interviewing Lauren Scruggs. Uh, I got the interview. And I'm like, what? Like, are you? That's amazing. I'm very happy for you. I didn't. I never heard back. Um, I, I didn't realize that you and and Juliana had been, you know, pointing at you. Oh. <laughs> I pointed She's to you. Like, who? <laughs> That'd be you. <laughs> That's why I love her, folks. Um, that was great. <laughs> she um, she had been. You guys have been talking. Um, Juliana was going through breast cancer at the time, so you guys were bonding over just challenging times and had form, uh, formed a little bit of a friendship. And you did that interview and she said, why don't you come back to the studio after? And I had just finished shooting the show and Lo was there with her mom. And I, you know, was like, hey, it's, it's so great to meet you. Well, welcome to LA from Dallas. And I wrote down three things that I thought it'd be fun for them to do. My favorite breakfast spot, um, her dad like watches, she told me. So I wrote down a watch place and um, a, a hiking spot. She's actually, because... Uh, 40 feet from us, we have that framed. Oh, this was no the way. letter. This is the letter that I wrote. I know you probably no with a ring by. It's hard to see. Um, oh, my That's cell phone's so on there, cool. but whatever. Um, <laughs> but these were these were the fun spots that um, I, I wrote out for her. And uh, I said, if you want to go on a you know a, a fun hike with your mom, here's a great hike, Franklin Canyon in LA. Wow. And if you have any questions, here's my cell. Or she, he said, he actually said, my friend and I are going tomorrow. Cause it was Friday when we met my friend and I are going tomorrow. If you want to join us, just text me. And I am like super Southern. I don't know if you were this way, but I like never would really text guys that like, Oh yeah. Except for like my good friends, but like yeah. not, I don't know. So I was like, should I text him like to my mom the next morning? Well, you text me that you text me later. That the next morning. Yes. She mm -hmm. did not text in the evening time. She was very <laughs> sweet. Nothing after 6 p.m. That's awesome. And, uh, and yeah, she hit me up and, and I said, well, I'm actually yeah going hiking. And we went hiking and it wasn't like this love at first sight story. I mm -hmm. was finding out more about her um, and then chatting with her mom. And uh, after we came back to the house, they left. And my buddy who was on the hike with me goes, I gotta be honest, man. And then he starts tearing up. No joke. He starts tearing up and he goes, she seems perfect for you. And I, wow. I'm like, really? Uh, what? You're like feeling it like that? And he goes, absolutely. And um, we just started texting and FaceTiming. And um, I think I, I flew you out. Um, it happened to be like on Valentine's Day weekend. Or yeah, months had a couple months had passed. And I said, hey, do you want to come out for Valentine's Day? I'll put you up at a hotel. We'll, we'll just, you know, tour LA and just have a great time. And, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, well, so I had a big crush on this guy in Dallas when I came to LA, like really big crush. I was, I like apologized to my mom as we were flying to LA. Like, I am so sorry if I'm in my own zone because I'm like, I don't know. I just really was like feeling this guy. So I like when I met him, I like truly <laughs> didn't even think anything. Like I was like, my mind was elsewhere. So then we go on a hike and, um, I just like loved our conversation. I was like, he is so sweet. And, um, after like a couple months of talking, I feel like he is, he was just like such an intentional, like pursuer and like never wondered, like, is this guy interested in me? Is he not like, he was just very like clear and like respectful and so many different things. That's so funny. No, I'm just thinking about it. I think it's good. I don't want to interrupt, but I think it's cool to listen to the story back because it just mm -hmm. reminds you of, of how special it is and just, it's, you know, brings connection again. Yeah. So I was like, um, G wait. Oh yeah. No, sorry. I came out. Oh, sorry. A couple months in after talking, I remember like calling my sister and I was like, 
I think I really like Jason. Like it like hit me one day. Wow. And then I remember you called me for the first time you were in New York and I was living with my best friend. Um, and we were in Dallas and I was like, Jason is calling. I was like freaking out. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> I think I, I think I like this guy because I don't that's know. awesome. I yeah. left out something. That's when you know. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I left out something in the story that I always kind of tend to forget, but it, it's it's important to mention. Uh, a few weeks before I knew anything about her coming to LA, I was watching. You decided to do just a, a select handful of interviews, mm -hmm. and you were on Dateline NBC. Um, and I was watching it. It was like a Friday night. I'm at home. I did decided not to just hang with my friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. And your story came on and, and it just reminded me, wow, what an insane journey. Like you're lucky to be alive. I would love to marry a girl like that. I, wow. I, I remember saying that. And of course, a That's couple weeks awesome. later, boom, we were like, we're on a hike together. So just wow. the, the turn of events was, it was quick. Um, it made no sense at all for me because I was doing E! News in LA. I was doing the Today Show in New York and I was like working so hard I was almost getting sick because I just wasn't sleeping. So the idea of introducing Texas um, and making a triangle with my tra – it just – it made no sense at all. Um, but it just – it felt right. We took it slow. We didn't rush into it. It wasn't this crazy like – romantic first couple of times hanging out. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to get to know. I think I was coming off of a, an interesting relationship before where I feel like she checked all the right boxes, but I'm like, I don't think I'm even in love with this girl. Yeah. What am I wasting my time for the past yeah. year and a half? And then I met Lo and she's like, are you going to hold my hand? No, literally the first time <laughs> That's awesome. I came, <laughs> we'd been talking for like a while and I, I like long distance for that reason. Cause you're really like, actually getting to know each other there's just no mm -hmm. like yeah distraction of like friends or just like anything so I feel like we knew each other really well and then my thought was this trip is really going to show me if he's like real like if this yeah. is like true you know yeah. and I remember like going well you did a today show segment and so it was like fun seeing you in your element but then you you took the rest of the day off and um, we went to Point Doom and we went on this like little hike on this rock and we we're up at the top. Oh, you're and hey, you're my, my attack dog. <laughs> hey, that's and good to like, have. <laughs> pretty, pretty scary. Um, but we we're at the top and there's literally like dolphins jumping. No and way. I was like, how is he? I hired them right now. I literally <laughs> had a special dolphins coming for the moment. It was brilliant. Oh I'll my pass gosh. along the business card. Oh but then later gosh. that, oh, and then I saw him like, Literally uh, <laughs> opening up church that they started in his house, but it was at the montage at this point and just really cool. Like I saw so much of his community so and I was cool. like, wow, he's like, this is crazy. Wow. This is so amazing. But that night I remember we were back at his house and there were like two couches in the living room and he's sitting on this couch and I'm sitting on this couch. Like he, I'm sitting on this couch and he goes and sits on that couch <laughs> to like watch something on TV. I was like, <laughs> okay? I just wanted to be respectful. <laughs> oh my god, which is great. Sue me. No, I love great. that kind funny. of stuff. <laughs> like when you when you have like the best intention doing that, and then like the girl's yes. like, "Wait, does he even like me?" And you're like, "I'm trying yeah. to do the right thing here. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying yeah, to be right. a gentleman." That's so funny. That's like, awesome. We don't have to like do anything. Just you don't have to be forty here. feet apart, but you're allowed to sit near me and, and watch a movie. Awesome. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Weirdo. Friends, it's a new year and I know a lot of us are starting new things that we've never seemed to have the time for. And one thing I know is on a lot of your minds right now is the decision to go to college or further in your education. So today I'm so excited to tell you about one of mine and my family's favorite places, Liberty University. Liberty is a Christian university in Central Virginia that's been training champions for Christ for over 50 years. They have so many options to choose from when it comes to what to study and they offer more than 600 online degrees. Plus, most of their classes are 100% online and are held in eight-week subterms with no set login times, which means that education is something that if you ever want to pursue it and you're worried about a busy schedule, this is how you can make it happen. Uh, I actually got to take some classes from Liberty Online, and I did the eight-week subterm, and it was great. It's super flexible with your schedule because it's just 
get the work done whenever you can by the Monday that comes. And so if you have a busy lifestyle, this might be a practical way that you can actually get in your college. Liberty is so awesome. Several of my siblings actually attended Liberty. My brother and sister-in-law attended in person. My other brother attended in person. My sister is still at Liberty online. And so we're, we're big fans of Liberty. So if you're wanting to check out Liberty in person and you're in the grades 10 to 12, your sophomore to senior year or a transfer student, you and your family can attend college college for a weekend, which I highly recommend. It's actually really cool. I've been there when it's going on. It's February 23rd through the 25th, and you get to attend classes, explore campuses, and eat in the dining hall, and the food is good, y'all, okay? Liberty in person is legit. You will not regret going for a visit. You can register online through the College for a Weekend portal or call the admissions office at 800-543-5317. That's 800-543-5317. 5317. And if you're worried about costs, do not let that keep you from choosing Liberty. They offer multiple scholarships and discounts to help you stick to your new year budget goals too. And seriously, there is so much to love about this school, whether you are seeking a degree or just wanting extra knowledge. A few years ago, like I said, I took a couple classes and I didn't go the whole nine yards. I literally just took one semester. But what I took from that semester, I actually ended up preaching up about and a lot of sermons that I did that year. So you're going to learn so much. You can gain knowledge in whatever time that you're able to do it. Another thing that I love about the university is that their courses are taught from a biblical perspective. So like I said, a lot of things I learned, I took from and actually were able to use them in sermons. So super practical to your life. Visit liberty.edu slash Sadie to get started. And because you're a well that's good listener, you'll get your application fee waived. So hey, yo, we are making it as easy as we can for you. So friend, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu edu slash Sadie now and make this the year that you pursue your dreams. Y'all's story is so sweet. It's, and it's so cool because I was going to ask you about long distance, but y'all answered everything I wanted to ask about that because Christian and I were long distance, our whole relationship as well. And mm-hmm. it's true. It's so real. Like all you have is your communication with each other, you know, and your intentionality. And I love how you said he was so good at pursuing you that you never question and I feel like so many people that are younger right now, they just, you know, they treat it like a game. It's like, well, I'm not going to reply because they just replied. And what that might be yes. weird if I reply too soon. I'm like, no, it's not weird. It's it's like having a conversation, you know? It's like leave the weirdness, leave the confusion, and just lead well. And I love that. And it's really cool, too, that Christian had a similar moment when he was in ninth grade. I was in ninth grade, and Doug Dynasty had just started, and his family was watching Duck Dynasty and he saw me on it. And then the next day he told his baseball friends that he was going to marry me one day. And what's so crazy though, is he never told me that until literally the week we were getting married. Um, one of his friends texted him and said, dude, like, I just can't believe y'all are actually getting married. I remember in ninth grade when you told all of us, he were going to marry her. And he told me that. And I was like, how is this just now coming up? But I was glad it was just now coming up. And he didn't lead with that. Uh, You know, when we met, we just got to know each other. And we had two months before we even went on a first date that we just called. He he would set a time to call me. He'd be like, okay, can I call you Tuesday at seven? And it was like so intentional. And then he would, and then I remember one night I was about to hang up and I was like, okay, talk to you tomorrow. And I was like, or not. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, I got all awkward. And he was like, <laughs> you start rabbit trailing, I know. I was yeah. like, or we don't have to talk tomorrow or whatever. And he Being was like, crazy. of course I'll talk to you tomorrow. And he was just so affirming that whole time. And we just became such good friends and then went on our first date. And after that, it was, you know, shortly after where we were like, we knew we were going to, this was serious. But it was just cool because I think sometimes, you know, even if you know God has someone for you, don't rush the process. You know, you don't have to lead with you're the girl I'm going to marry because like wait till God reveals that to her too. <laughs> wait till like you'll actually start a relationship and see if this actually is something um, that you're going to pursue. And so y'all's story is awesome. And y'all brought up so many things I want to talk to you about. Um, you talked about Can your- Can I ask one question real fast? Please do. Ask me. <laughs> How many guys came up to you, ninth graders, and said the exact same thing? I, I know. really feel like God wants me to marry you. Oh my God. Be honest. I, I did. I will say that did happen, and I hated that kind of stuff. And I was just like, okay, well, God did not tell me that. So I, I don't know if I'm feeling it. And it was funny. I had, I did have a lot of parents, you know, tell me that they, 
want their you know child to marry me or whatever after seeing me in Dance with the Stars or whatnot. But it was actually cool because later on, again, when we were closer to actually getting engaged, his dad, who is like not the dad that's like involved in like relationship stuff. His dad is like he owns a construction company. He is like a, a business guy, but he's also so nice and so fun. But he's just not that dad that would say anything like that. And he actually did tell Christian when I was on Dance with the Stars, he was like, he's like, you and her would be so cute together. You should try to meet no. her. So uh-uh. it was funny. So uh, people did say that, but this one was true. This one yeah, was, was true. the real one. And God told me that too. That's the important <laughs> thing. It has to go both ways. I think it's a great lesson, especially for Christians, because this is where sometimes um, we can pigeonhole ourselves and get a little weird. Um, yes. I, I I can't remember. I mean, if I, if I had a dollar every time, uh, someone said, hey, can you connect me with Tim Tebow, my daughter? I feel like my daughter should marry him. Um, I oh. would be a billionaire. Um, it was like my second job trying to put defense up um, and, and be like, you know, well, Tim, you know, I just, you know, it's just, you know, and, and it just got really crazy. I'm like, well, Tim didn't hear from you. Yeah. Um, he didn't hear yeah. from God on this one. So why it's don't we just so chill true. out? It is so That's true. Wild. Just let God do his thing. Like I always say, you know, you don't have to promote yourself. And I love the story of David because David ends up being king, right? But he wasn't parading around the palace being like, I'm the perfect person to be king next. No, like he was actually just doing a really good job in the field, shepherding the sheep and practicing his music. And he got called in the palace to then play for Saul, which then got him a little bit of an end there. But then it wasn't even that. It was him being obedient and the faith that he had to be like, I'm going to fight Goliath. And then that elevated him. So it's like, you don't have to promote yourself. God will put you on the platform that he intends for you to have. God will put you in front of the people that he intends for you to be in relationship for. And it's not to say that you don't work hard. I mean, David worked hard. He did what he was handed and he did it well. But there's a difference in working hard and doing your job well and striving and promoting and, you know, trying to push things that really only God can do. And when it's a God story, it's so much better too. Like when you didn't force it or manipulate it and it's just like, this is only God. The story's so much cooler. Like y'all's story, it's it's so cool because it's just such a God thing. So I love it so much. Um, I want to talk to you about a couple of things you mentioned. One, you mentioned the Bible study that you started in your home. And I know that's grown to be something just so cool, probably bigger than what y'all expected when you started a Bible study. So Jason, tell me about the Bible study. You and Judah started hmm. together, right? And, and yeah. how do y'all even decided to start that? Um. It's so funny because when I think about it, it feels like three years ago, but it's been, I think, 11 years. Um, I'm so used to saying, oh, just a couple years ago, and I have to stop myself and go, no, it's been 11 plus years. But um, I had heard of Judah Smith through Rich Wilkerson. I went to high school with Rich Wilkerson, my best friend. I was in 12th grade. Rich Rich was in 10th grade. We met in detention. I'm like, I love this kid. (laughs) That is not Um, (laughs) a surprise to you. Rich. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) And um, I don't know, Rich, you you know, he was out here in LA years later after detention. And um, (laughs) he was like, have you heard of Judah Smith? I said, nope, I have no clue who that is. Uh, And he's like, let's go on YouTube. I got to show you some of his stuff. And I said, wow, this guy's just wildly talented. I remember I started following Judah on Twitter shortly thereafter. His father had passed away from cancer. And I sent him a DM and I said, hey, man, I'm praying for you. I'm so deeply sorry about your father. Look forward to meeting you at some point. Let me know if you need anything. And he responded a couple weeks later. And that's how we connected. And ironically enough, I, I, I never, I don't know. I'm very nostalgic. I went, I, I'm not a big Twitter guy, by the way. And I went on to Twitter recently and I looked up old DMs of friends and how I met them. And that's I found awesome. that DM from Judah. Oh I have it. I screen oh, grabbed it. It was such cool. a sweet, yeah, it was really sweet. And it was a great memory. And um, long story short, he came to LA um, and he goes, I just feel like once in a while, um, I should come down here and just maybe we can meet at your house in your living room and get some of your friends together. That was the agenda. There was no the idea of it becoming a church is insane. Wow. That's, <laughs> I have no business starting a church. I'm just a TV guy. 
Um, wow. And, uh, you know, he started coming uh, once a month and we had 10 people. I uh, came a couple months later, we had like 20. At some point after six or seven months, I had over 100 people in my living room. Wow. And it was a well-oiled machine by then. I was borrowing chairs from a, a, a local church, like Oasis, wow. if anybody's been to yep. uh, LA and Mosaic. And, um, and then my friend owned the Chick-fil-A on Hollywood Boulevard. So he was providing all the free chicken and, and oh, the nuggets. Awesome. And um, <laughs> people were getting parking tickets. And it was insane. So I said, oh all right, gosh. let's try to find a hotel or a place that's bigger. And it kept expanding. We went to this hotel called The Montage. We outgrew that. People were on the floor. Then we went to the ballroom of The Montage. Then we went to the ballroom of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Now we're in the Saban Theater. And um, wow. it was, uh, yeah, it's it's now Church Home. I mean, that it's the second wow. campus of Church Home, which um, was born out of Judah's uh, dad and mom's vision up in Seattle. And um Judah is um, just one of the greatest men I've ever met in my entire life. Mm -hmm. He has never done anything that I've ever seen where I go, oh, I don't know, man. Like, obviously, wow. he's not perfect, not trying to say that at all. But, you know, when you, you, you look up to someone and you're like, ah, man, I don't know. I feel like you. he's just one of those guys. He's just consistent, um, lives, lives above reproach, and um, he's my brother and I will protect wow. him forever. And I'm so thankful. And once a month, awesome. um, we, we have church at the Saban theater and I used to, um, get up wow. and talk in the beginning, but I would get too emotional. So, um, I got fired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now Chelsea gets up at the end. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so funny. I love that. One thing I feel like gets mentioned before you become a parent, but you never really understand until you actually become a parent, is how much sleep you're about to lose when you're raising an almost two-year-old, or really just, for that matter, a kid, okay? If you have a baby, you probably don't sleep a lot, and I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. What is sleep, right? I mean, I have a, an amazing baby, but also sleep is important, and sleep does help you in life get through your day, and so if you can have a good quality of sleep, even if it's not a lot, it does make a huge difference, and that's something that Christian and I have seen this year. Our quality of sleep, our, our quantity might not be a lot, but our quality is strong. And there are times whenever I've woken up and I'm sitting in this bed and I have Honey and Cabo and Christian and it's been so hot and it's just crazy. But Christian and I actually made the switch to Miracle Made sheets this year and they have been a game changer. These sheets by Miracle Made are inspired by silver infused fabrics made by NASA. So if you're searching for temperature regulating bedding, here it is. This is a great option for you. Um, also, I don't like changing my sheets very much, which who does? It's not a fun task, but this makes it really easy to not have to change it so often because they stay cleaner longer because they're infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9% .9 of bacterial growth, leaving them cleaner and staying fresher three times longer than any other sheets. These sheets staying cleaner longer is also an incredible thing for your skin because bacteria is not you know, bacteria and dirt that's left behind can clog your pores, obviously, and cause you to break out. But you don't have to worry about that because these sheets are so much cleaner. And not only that, they are incredibly soft. I think if Honey and Cabo had their way every night, they'd sleep in our bed every single day because our bed is the most comfortable. And I personally love it. Anytime we change the sheets while we're washing the other ones, I miss my miracle sheets because they are the best, which leaves me to be, I just need to order one more pair. They are awesome. It gets the best night's sleep. So go to trymiracle.com slash woe to try it today. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You can save 40% off and be sure to use our promo code woe at checkout to save even more and get three free towels. This is a steal right now, y'all. You are not going to miss this. And Miracle is also so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you're going to get a full refund. So you can upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made today. Go to trymiracle.com slash woe and use the code woe to claim your free three piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash woe to treat yourself today. I've gotten to go to church home a couple of times. I went when it was um, at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And then I went, um, since it's been in the theater, I've been. And it's just so yep. cool and just so awesome to know that it started from a Bible study. And I love how you said, I'm just a TV guy. What do I have to do starting a church? <laughs> and I think, I think the reality is, is like, most people listening to this podcast are not people who think of themselves as people who will start a church, but 
as a disciple of Christ, like we are called to go and make disciples. And I love how it's like you can be the TV guy and still be the guy that was a part of starting the church because you opened up the doors to your home. And for a lot of people, like the greatest ministry they will do which is such powerful ministry is to open up the doors to your home, you know, Mm -hmm. no matter what job you do, no matter what your job title is to not think of ministry as just a pastor position or I work at the church, but to think of ministry as loving God and loving people right where you're at with what you have. And so I think your story is just so inspiring to people to know, like, I can do this with my life. Like it might not lead to being church home, but what if it leads to 10 people and 10 of my closest friends uh, desiring God more? Yeah, I mean, well, what a win, you know? Uh, I love my mom has this big sign in her bathroom. It's a Mother Teresa quote, and it says, you know, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And I think about that a lot. And I think about, you know, people might look at my life and see me preaching at stuff like passion and say, wow, she's doing so much ministry. But I always want to make sure that my ministry is not just a stage moment, but it's at my home, whenever I'm with my family, with my friends, whenever I invite them over, we have a Wednesday night group. Um, Like that's so important. And so I love that you set the tone for that and look at what it led to. It's just awesome. And then it it was easy, right? I mean, I felt like um, just telling a couple people and then the word would spread and People and people think, oh, LA, it's just such a dark city. And I'm like, actually, there's a lot of people here who moved from Oklahoma and Florida <laughs> and Texas yeah. and you know all over the you know the Bible Belt per se, and, um, really all around the country. And yeah, they want to find just great community, and they um, they don't want to be duped, and they just um, they're just looking for, for people that they can trust and love on them and. Um, have been hurt in, in the church. And um, and our whole goal is just to kind of maybe help you unlearn some things that um, if you grew up going to a church that maybe hurt you or anything like that, we just said, hey, we're going to be your friend. Um, we're here for you. And here's who God is. It's good. Gosh, and that will change. That will change a life right there. And it <laughs> has to, to so many. And I love that you said that about LA because People said that to me, even in my mom, whenever they were going to let me go on Dance with the Stars, they're like, I can't believe you're going to let her do that. You know, it's such a dark place. And my mom's like, exactly. That's why she should do this because she's a light. Like, that's what we're called to be, a light of the world. And so when we say things like, oh, don't go there, I'm like, that's where you should go. Like, if that's where you think is dark, that's where you you. should go and be. And so I I love it. Y'all are such a light where y'all are. And I know there's so many people around y'all that are the same way. And so... Super encouraging. Um, Lo, I want to ask you, we brought up your accident and I pulled a quote that you said that I thought was just really, really cool that I wanted you to expand on. It said, my parents always taught me that beauty is internal, but I did not fully understand that until my accident happened. And there's so many girls listening to this podcast who just struggle so much with getting so caught up in that outward beauty and outward appearance and what people think of them. And so what did that time of your life uh, teach you and how did that start to reshape the way that you thought about that? Oh my gosh, so much. Sorry. I broke you. Thank you she has this little, um, <laughs> ever since I met her, we've named her Mona and it's kind of like, she can't burp. It's phenomenal. I mean, who can't burp? She can't. It's a gift. <laughs> yeah. So Mona is in there and Mona makes little noises and you're going to be- Always at the worst time. Yeah. Nice. So if you hear so Mona, funny. just bear with her. Well, hey, you're <laughs> yeah. literally uh, one month ago, I had someone on my podcast and she was just talking and she was in the middle of this deep story and all of a sudden, like she just burps and I was just, I was just going to like, I was just going to let it go. She was in person too. I was just going to kind of keep going. And she goes, oh my gosh, I just burped. What the heck? And she, <laughs> we laughed so hard. So you're not the only one There's that like has uh, burped on the podcast. Thank you. Now you guys are going to be listening for Mona during know, her story. But go ahead. That's so funny. <laughs> no, um, well, I would say so at that time, I was reporting on Fashion Week seasonally and um, was just like really entrenched in an environment that like really was focused on outward appearance and fashion and so many different things like that, which is all like so great. But, um, I feel like my focus was more on it, I think, than I realized. And even like, I don't know, you, you can start like, I feel like when you go through something like physically changing, you really see your like 
idols right away because it's like the things that are really getting you to your core core besides like the grief part of loss of something physical like my arm or eye but you're literally like wait am I gonna still get like compliments are guys gonna still like think I'm attractive and it's kind of just shows you so much right in front of your face um and this was something that I couldn't like reverse or get away from. And I would look in the mirror and be like, oh my gosh. And I just remember even like half my head was shaved just from my, my brain surgery. And I had been dating this guy for a little while, like before, and then we had broken up. And I remember like seeing him soon after. And I was just like, oh my gosh, my hair is like growing back. And if like the wind comes, it's going to like grow and like stick, it's going to like stick up straight in the air. Cause it's like the length of like my bangs right here. Um, but I had like extensions or I'd wear like a hat or something, but I was just like, it's just crazy how it was like all consuming, almost like just processing like the physical difference. And so I really had to like look at that and be like, wow, I really like identified myself through that more than I thought because I never like spent that much time getting ready. So like in my mind, I was thinking this just like appearance doesn't really matter to me, but I think to every human and like men and women, like it's just probably more of like a concern than we may realize sometimes. And yeah, I, I had all these thoughts and fears and they just all were proven wrong. So I think that is what taught me so much about beauty because one of them was, is a guy ever going to be attracted to me again? And, um, not that that being proven wrong is like, like I'm winning kind of thing. It's not like that. It's more just, I feel like God was showing me in certain ways. Like I identify you like so much bigger than this. And this is not like what makes you beautiful. And, um, yeah. So I feel like I just saw that come to life. And even Jace was, oh my gosh, I remember like six months into dating and I was still like really insecure about, showing my arm without my prosthesis or like without a um, long sleeve t-shirt on and except around like my friends and family. And I remember we were with my sister and her husband and my, we were in Mexico. Yeah. And Jace is like, this is like enough. Like I, I had, had, I had it. to I was, see yeah. your arm. Yeah. And my sister was like, low, seriously, this is enough. And then I was like, Hi, Oh my gosh, you guys are making me sweat. And, um, <laughs> and I remember like Jace was like, okay, we're going to go into this room and I like basically want to meet your little arm. And I was like, so scared. Like, I don't think I've ever been that scared ever. And I was like, can my sister come with me? And he was like, no, this is like between you and I. <laughs> and I remember, yes. I remember like taking off my arm and I like immediately like covered it with his hand yeah. and Jace like took my hand and like held oh, my hand wow. and he was like, he was like, we're just going to sit here. We're going to wow. like hang. That's awesome. Does it make you cry? <laughs> it makes me cry. cry. I'm like cheering. That's like the sweetest thing ever. It was Gosh. so sweet. But he was just like, he was like, what is your fear? Like that I'm not going to love you. And I was like, mm. yes. And he was like, wow. he was like, this like makes me love you even more. And mm. I like love this mm. arm more than like your other arm. Wow. And um, it was just like so sweet. And then there were just like big milestone moments like, that like showing in my eye without my eye like just certain things like that that were just like incredibly vulnerable for me and I feel like he just helped me accept like my new physical self and has always just made me feel so loved and always like breaks the ice with wow. my little arm and my eye just with groups of people and like makes it just like it's me it's like who I am and so it's just part of our life but I feel like over time, it really has taken time to like realize what beauty really means because even what I was saying about like, I really just don't care anymore what people think. I, I think that also came out of, um, we were in Idaho and we went to Dallas cause my sister had her baby. So we were there and I was like, my like prosthesis needs some work. So I get it done in Dallas. So I was like, I'm just going to take it with me. And I'm going to take my other arm too and just ship it an hour away. And it'll be to me by the time I'm going back to Idaho. Like they're really quick with it and stuff like that. 
and I don't care if anyone in Dallas sees like I'm comfy with all those people. This is just like a couple years ago. And um and there was like this problem with like the mail center and like a FedEx was literally keeping my arm, like wouldn't let it go. Like wow. my two arms to like my place that I get it um like painted and stuff and um we were all trying to figure out, we're like, this is the weirdest thing. And this, the lady that works at the arm place, it's like really small family thing. She was like calling the mail place. Like, I'm going to come pick up those arms. Like, why are you guys keeping them? And we never were getting an answer. So they were there for like three weeks wow. in like the mail center and they weren't like releasing them. Um, and I remember thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going back to Idaho and I can either literally stay in my house and not leave. And it's the summer. And so no one like sees my arm or I have to make a decision. and I can go have fun and just have my arm free. <laughs> yes. no, um, and wow. I decided like the second and it was just like so different. Like it really like pushed me to, to do that. But it was so different than I expected and so much bigger in my mind than like what it actually was. And I remember just new people like seeing it and being like, I just remember our friend being like, how do you like ski with your, I don't know, doing stuff like that. And just people like treating it just like me or just not even noticing. And yeah. Yeah. Most people, they don't even notice. I mean, we'll, we'll meet people and um, they're like, wait, you don't have an arm. You don't have an eye. I mean, they wow. don't even see your scar anymore. Um, so I think it's obviously like, it's, yeah. yeah, but it's, it was really important for you and it was a massive challenge and still to this day is something that you work through with your eye. Man, um, yeah. But having said that, we'd love to introduce you to uh, Lowe's little arm. <laughs> yes. uh, we call him, we call him Bior, uh, B-I-O-R-E with a, with a little thing over the eye. What do you call it? An ellipses? I just introduced Bior. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, hey, Vior, yes. <laughs> this is but awesome. I, I needed to be like, I feel like I learned so much from that. Like you have to like truly just live out your fear and you'll just yeah. experience it's so true. much more freedom. And it's true. I was like, wow, that like took me a while to, I feel like accepting, like it really is a process of grief when you lose, like they said, it's like losing a sibling. Sure. And it's like, I really went through that grief process and I know there's no timeline on that. So I really like let myself kind of do it in my own time, but I'm so glad I eventually yeah. like got pushed to kind of live through my fear. And yeah. now it's just like life is so different, truly. Yeah. Like wow. since then. But again, Probably. that shows me what beauty really is also. Cause I was like, wait, so I just want to look this certain way and that's what's going to define me. Or I want to just like, be free in who I am. And like, I learned that is so much more beautiful than like looking so yep. nice. You know? Yeah. Gosh, that's so powerful. And that can speak to every single person listening. Uh, I was thinking about the verse whenever you talked about showing him your arm. And obviously this is different context for this, but when Adam and Eve were in the garden and it says they were naked and they felt no shame. And I think that, you know, we can look at that Obviously, they actually were naked and felt no shame, but there's a lot of things in life that make us feel naked, that make us feel so vulnerable and exposed. And when you share that with someone who loves you and sees you and you get to experience a moment of such vulnerability without feeling shame, it is one of the most powerful gifts of connection that God allows us to feel in relationship. Like That's what he designed relationship for. And that's why it's like so important you experience those moments with the person who is committed to loving you, you know, is and truly loves you and truly sees you. And it breaks off that shame that you carry by yourself. And so when you're able to have those moments with your spouse or your family members and ones that are committed to love you forever, it's so powerful. And I think that a lot of us, you know, not everybody's going to walk through an accident like that, but all of us can work on intentionally stripping back those idols in our life. I remember one time I realized how much of an idol um, appearance was for me. And so I just was like, you know what, the next couple of days, and I was at a conference, I was like, I'm not going to wear makeup. And to me, I know, I know it sounds silly, but it was a big deal to me. I was like, this is like, really, like, yeah. I, I don't feel pretty, you know, and I'm walking in front of tons of people who I know are looking at me or whatever. And I don't feel like put together. And 
Um, but I just remember like it stripping it away and it helped me just get outside of my head and helped me to stop thinking so much about what I look like so that I could see the people around me, you know? And there's other things in life that, that I've had to do that too. Even talked about uh, before we got on the podcast how I'm taking some time off social media and I have a team who's helping me and posting the things that need to be posted. But even in the few weeks that I've been off of it, I would think that social media is not an idol to me because I'm like, I don't really care that much. Like, I'm like, you know, I, I'll go a week without posting when I know a lot of people will post every day. Or I, It's not that big of a deal uh, to me that I, I wouldn't think it would be that big of a deal. But even the past year, I've been seeing how many things have come up in my mind that I'm like, why did I think that? Like, am I going to be like irrelevant when I come back? Or am I going to like lose followers? Or are people that have asked me to speak at their conference going to be disappointed because I'm not using my big platform to promote their conference? Like all these things. And I'm like, that's not what my worth's in. Like, that's not what defines me. That's not why people invite me to show up because of my following. I mean, hopefully it's more than that. Hopefully it's because of who I am. But even just weeding those lies out. Um, and so anything that's an idol to you, anything that you think like your worth is in, whether it's um, compliments or social media or your following or um, your status, your job title, it's it's important to take the steps that you can to strip those back and just lay it at the feet of the Lord and let Him redeem those things over you and let Him say who you really are. And so Y'all, this has been so good. I've personally learned so much from y'all in this short time of talking to y'all. It's honestly been, I know we've had to stop a few times for different things. It's been one of my favorite podcasts because of just how real you both came and how um, the stories that y'all shared y'all are so fun but also so down to earth and don't shy away from the hard stuff and so I've just thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and I hope we get to do this again Um, but thank y'all so much for being on the Well That's Good podcast. Sadie you're an expert communicator and and a gem of a human and we look forward to getting to know you more we're honored to be on your podcast we hope we see you when you come to Malibu if not we know we're going to run into you at some point, yes. but keep, um, keep doing this. And, um, you're just, Thank you. yeah, you're, you're a very impressive person. Thank you. That's I so agree. sweet. <laughs> Y'all yes. are awesome.